Wake up from the darkness. Look out yeah. on peaceful skies. Living a life of hope. Planting the seeds we sow. 春天花蕊长地红，心中有爱花青香。传乎世界每一人，脚踏实地有希望。我们手牵着手，让世界改变。爱就在你左右，微笑遍布世界。Dear Venerables, dear Buddha's Light members, auspicious greetings. Thank you for coming for our affinities with the Buddha's Light event. This event is hosted by BLIA San Francisco to celebrate the 30th anniversary of BLIA World Health. Venerable Master Xingyun, founder of BLIA, has been in 53. He was invited to Lei'in Temple in Ilan, Taiwan. In, in 1967, he established Fo Guangshan to propagate the Dharma. Throughout the years, he has held true to Buddhist traditions while adapting his methods of Dharma propagation to the times. He showed compassion to people and brought Buddhism into society. 30 years ago, he established the Changhua Buddhist Light Association at Taiwan's National Dr. Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall. 
then established the Buddha's Light World Headquarters in Los Angeles, California. He spread Buddhism around the world, benefiting all sentient beings. Over the, over the years, Buddha's Light members have actively participated in United Nations conferences. The The 2019 BLIA World to address the changing needs of society and keep up an innovative charity events to give back to society, some of which attracted tens of thousands of attendees. This year, we are happy to celebrate the 30th anniversary of BLIA World Headquarters and BLIA San Francisco. In these 30 years, the monastics and lay disciples of Fo Guangshan have broken the boundaries of religion and entrenched themselves within society. They have brought stability to society by aligning their Dharma propagation efforts with the core tenets of humanistic Buddhism, that which was taught by the Buddha himself, that which is needed by human beings, that which is pure, and that which is virtuous and beautiful. On this memorable day, BLIA San Francisco has specially organized English, Chinese, and Cantonese sessions of the Affinities with the Buddha's Light Reflection event, all hosted simultaneously. We have invited Buddha's Light members and friends of the Buddha's Light in San Francisco to share their experiences, growth, and learnings from BLIA events. Through this reflection event, we hope to spread the joy of humanistic Buddhism. Venerable Master Xinyun, founder of BLIA, to give us a Dharma talk. Fogwanghui 不是什么政治的团体我们是一个完全民间的我们是做法给大家的平安快乐的生活那么这就是佛光会的组织了一九九二年五月十六日国际佛光会世界总会在美国洛杉矶成立弘法立生建设佛光净土的宗旨并主张慈悲包容实现世界和平的目标下以一人一百元的捐低之资在南非成立全世界第一所非盈利宗教团体的教育培训电脑教学等 
，在全世界各地组织佛光青年团、童军团，举办夏令营、青少年营、儿童读经比赛等，落实信仰与传承。在文化的事业方面，全球佛光会员汇聚各方资源。护持无杂质电视台及报纸的经营，成立人间卫星电视台及人间福报，希望为社会播下安定的种子，共同深耕优质的媒体文化。为使佛法的弘扬无语言文字的障碍，成立国际翻译中心，全面性从事佛教经论的翻译工作。重视泛版音乐，积极投入佛教音乐的推广，并多次于欧、美、亚、澳洲等地举办泛版音乐会，以多元化的呈现带给人欢喜及心灵的充实。为了培育学子德智体群并重，也举办各项体育竞技等娱乐活动，加强体能，并充实文化涵养。从而将六度万恨落实日常生活当中。在慈善的事业方面，当急难发生时，全球的佛光人以身在当地的地缘关系，提供最迅速的救助。多年来，赈灾活动不胜枚举，每遇佛光人都及时投入。同时结合全世界各协会，提供物质与精神的援助。佛光会长期提供弱势团体慈善服务，从事各种慈善救济公益活动，如全球轮椅捐赠、冬令救济、义诊、祈福法会、关怀独居老人、育幼院、受刑人等，抚慰世间苦难的同胞。只要是对社会有益。佛光人皆乐于参与，例如资源回收、净山、净滩、植树等活动，或是协助各层面人士，都能看到佛光会员的服务与付出。在修持方面，将佛法圣意推广至社会各个阶层，共同创造祥和的人间净土。佛光会经常举办禅修、念佛。朝山、借会、献灯等活动，借由大众的共修，法水的滋润，让大众的心灵获得皈依，使生命领域更加宽阔。真理的传播，给予大家有探讨与宣导的空间。佛光会目前已培养了近两百名谈讲师，常走访校园、社团。监狱、社区，做心灵净化的辅导工作，也经常性的举办各类讲习会，提供会员多元化的学习机会，充实自己，开发个人的潜能。佛光会自成立以来，于全球五大洲的八十多个国家，成立了两百个协会，拥有五百万名会员，成为全球华人最大的社。团，并于两千零三年正式成为 NGO 非政府组织咨询顾问，与联合国新闻部非政府组织合作交流，将融合世界文化、跨越语言、种族，建立和平地球村之任务推广国际。希望未来有更多佛光人一起为全人类社会注入欢喜融合，发挥国际性格。可尊佛法一致，实现人间净土。Next, we would like to welcome BLIA SF Advising Venerable, Venerable Ru Yang, to say a few words.
A special greeting to all Fokwang's members, friends, and venerables. In celebrating the 30 years anniversary of BRIA San Francisco Chapel, we have organized this affinity with the Buddha's Lights event today. Thank you very much for joining us. Time has fly. Under the leadership of Venerable Master Sing Yun and the hard words of all the Four Points members, Buddha's Light International Association's headquarters and BRIA San Francisco's chapter has established for 30 years. On May 16, 1992, Buddha's Light International Association organized the first international conference for members in Los Angeles. At the time, Venerable Master Sing Yun composed the following poem. A heart with compassion vows to save sentient being. My body is that of the Dharma ocean that bites no boat. Ask me, what have I achieved in this lifetime? May the Buddha's light shine over the five continents. Venerable Master Sinyun has set this poem as the goal for the Dharma publications of BLIA. In the past 30 years, through the efforts and aspiration of all Four Points members, we can say that the Buddha's light did indeed shine over the five continents. Four Points members spread the seeds of joy throughout the human world and the Dharma around the globe. The marriage and virtues from what they have done are boundless. We can say that the BLIA San Francisco chapter Established the same time as BLIA headquarters. Sambal Temple is currently organizing a special refreshment exhibition for this 30 years anniversary. From shooting this historical photo, I can see that numerous cultures, educations, charities, and cultural events were organized by the BLIA San Francisco's members through hard words and collaborative efforts. I do believe that they will have hardship and challenge when organizing the event and events, events during the events. How do the Four Points members apply the Dhammas to resolve these obstacles? The guest speakers today in the affinities with the Buddha's light forms will share this valuable experience with everyone. As Venerable Master Sinyun said, good cause and conditions lead to success. One person can only do so much due to ability and limited time. With the collaborative efforts, many things can be achieved. Here, I would like to thank the BLIA San Francisco President Candace and project leader Wang Rong, as well as the assistance of many executives for the organizing today's events. It is through their teamwork to make this affinity with the Buddha's Life event with its host in three languages at the same time. From sharing, the guest speaker are passing their literacy on. We have seniors, middle-aged generations, and young adults amongst our speakers today. They will be sharing their various experience so that people who may have an opportunity to organize an event in the future can learn from. Once again, thank you very much everyone for making these events possible. May everyone have safety and auspiciousness in life. Next, we would like to welcome BLIA SF Advisor, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, yes. Thank you very much, Venerable Ruyang, for your wise words. Next, please welcome BLIA SF President Candace Lee to say a few words about our event today. Dear Venerables, Buddha's Light members, and friends of the Buddha's Light, auspicious greetings. Venerable Master Xinying, Founder of Fu Guangshan was once asked what his lifelong wish was. He wrote the following verse A heart with compassionate vows to save sentient beings. My body is that of the Dharma ocean that binds no boats. Ask me 
What have I achieved in this lifetime? May the Buddha's light shine over the five continents. We can see that Venerable Master's wish is to spread Buddhism across the five continents. Has he achieved this? Indeed, he has. Today, one can find the BOIA where there is sunlight, and one can find Buddha's light members where there is water. We are grateful for Venerable Master for founding Fo Guangshan and BOIA and innovating from tradition. Dharma propagation is no longer a duty reserved for monastics. It can be done together with monastic and lay disciples. Venerable Master established a working creed for BLIA members. Give others confidence, give others joy, give others hope, and give others convenience. By learning about and practicing giving, we can benefit ourselves and others. We can cleanse this world of apathy, hatred, discrimination, and war. We can usher in a humanistic pure land filled with compassion, tolerance, respect, and peace. It has been 30 years since BOIA San Francisco was built from the ground up. Today, we have nine subchapters and three young adult divisions. Our accomplishments today are thanks to the guidance of our advising venerables and the efforts of each and every one of you. Thanks to the affinities with the Buddha's Light event for bringing us all together to share our experiences. We can hear many stories of receiving the joy of the Dharma through giving and serving. I wish all of us can reflect on ourselves from time to time, continue on the path of learning and volunteering, live our lives to the fullest and become a Buddhist line members that brings infinity joy to others. Finally, I would like to wish on prosperity Next, I would like to introduce our attending advising venerables, venerable venerables for attending today. All right, everyone, now it's time to quickly take a group photo. And I will turn it over to Jessica, our IT coordinator, to do so. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear, hear me clearly. So we're going to take two pictures today. Um, one of them is going to be just smiling, just a happy face. And then the second one is going to be holding a lotus gesture. So with your um, right hand, just have your middle and thumb finger together and hold all your other fingers up. Um, I will count it down. So give me one second to set up. And then, so this one we are doing smiling faces. So if anybody has their camera off, please turn your camera on so that we can um, take this first picture. All right, I'm gonna count down. So first is just smiling. So if you're holding the lotus gesture, you can put that down. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next. Where everybody could hold these up your lotus gesture and we will take one more throw. Okay, I'm just needing to wait until everybody gets their lotus gesture up. Okay, ready? One, two, three. One more. Okay, thank you very much everyone.
Thank you, Jessica. And thank you, everyone. Now it's time to start our main event, in which we will have a few speakers from various Guangshan temples around Northern California to share their experiences, growth, and learnings from Buddhism and BLIA. Before we begin, I would like to say a little reminder to our speakers to please keep your sharing under five minutes so that we can try to end the event on time. At five minutes, I will say a reminder to wrap things up and at six minutes, I will have to stop the speakers. So please try to keep your sharing to under five minutes so I don't have to cut anyone off. As for the audience, please remember to keep your microphones muted. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat and please make sure to also write who the question is addressed to. And don't worry, all the questions will be answered at the very end. Now, Without further ado, I would like to introduce the first speaker, Celine Chu. Celine is on the BLIA SF Board of Directors. She was president of SFYAD from 2017 to 2021 and has contributed tremendous efforts spreading Dharma, leading events locally and across North America, helping local temples and community organizations, as well as supporting YAD members. Please welcome Celine. Hi, everybody. I joined San Francisco YAD back in 2015. And at that time, I was looking for a job and also a place to stay in the Bay Area. So it was a very stressful time for me. Fortunately, my mother was a devotee at Australia per Fo Guangshan. So when she visited me, she also brought me to Fo Guangshan in San Francisco. And that's where I met Auntie Angie and Venerable Miao Long. Auntie Angie graciously gave me a place to stay at her place until I find a job. And Venerable Miao Long introduced me to San Francisco Young Adult Division. Since joining San Francisco Young Adult Division, my life changed tremendously. I spent lots of my time volunteering at a temple and met some of my closest friends here. I had opportunities to organize workshops, classes, events for young people like myself to contribute to the society and learn about Buddhism. This gave me lots of opportunity to develop leadership, organization, and people skills. I also taught at a Sunday children's class, which taught me a lot about patience and creativity. Through all the activities, I've learned more about Buddhism, both in theory and in practice. I've also learned how to combine my work as a design manager at LinkedIn and with Buddhism. Over the pandemic, I've hosted many events related to design and career. I've also, because I have a, a lot of experience hosting online events, I'm actually the go-to person when it comes to hosting online workshops at work. And besides skills, I've also changed the way I look at my relationship with my career. For a very long time, I see success as my direct ability to do good work and having material status is a sign of and measure of success. However, I later realized that when I connect my value and happiness to my career status and work output, I'm making myself very miserable. I'm often stressed if I screw up at work or I would chase over promotions and salaries. However, learning Buddhism and being part of SFYID I understand the importance about managing my expectations, that nothing can really be expected. I can only influence as much as I can, but nothing can guarantee an outcome. So there is no use in being upset over things that are outside of my control. That is the case when I'm organizing events and trying to work with volunteers and dealing many circumstances around me. I just have to learn to focus on doing my best yet let go of my expectations when things doesn't turn out the way I expected. And that is exactly the situation that I would face at work too. In fact, when I let go of my narrow expectations of how things should be, I learn to be more open-minded and creative. I look at things differently. I start to enjoy and the process and enjoy the moment instead of focusing only on the angle. I don't need to achieve the angle to be happy. I can be happy right now with the circumstances I'm in. Coincidentally, because I focus on doing my best and being flexible, I became better at my work and I was promoted at work too. 
Of course, I was lucky to have an employer that appreciates my work, so I'm re rewarded accordingly. But it's a very different mindset when you're promoted as a side effect of your work. Because I'm definitely happy and appreciative of the promotion, but my day-to-day -day doesn't change and I still continue to do good work and I'm enjoying my journey. I don't have to wait for that promotion or salary increase before I can enjoy and be happy. And this is just one of the many examples of how Buddhism changed me. Now, as a manager, I must say that the way I manage directly influenced by what I've learned in Buddhism. Without it, I cannot imagine how I can handle many of the tricky people-related situations as a manager. And this is why I'm super thankful of my experience at SFYD, and I hope many others can benefit from it, from it like me. Thank you, everyone, for hearing my sharing. Thank you, Celine. Uh, next up, we have Yenting Lo. Yenting is a founding member of San Francisco YAD and is currently the English secretary at BLIASF. He is actively involved in various translation and interpretation efforts within Shan and BLIA, including the Guang Dictionary of Buddhism and the Buddha Dharma Pure and Simple series. Please welcome Yen Ting. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Celine. And hello, everyone. I'm Yen Ting. When I first got the topic for the speakers, which was initial aspiration, I had to think about a little bit about what mine was, because some people find it right away, other people spend time with the organization and then they find it. And there's still other people that think they found their initial aspiration, but then later on they realize it was something else all along the way. But for me right now, the initial aspiration that's currently in my mind is repaying kindness. I've been to Fogang Shan temples with my parents since I was little, but I never really thought about being involved with this family. It was only after college when I was at a time that I was uncertain about what to do next in my life. Then every time I went to the temple, the venerables and volunteers there, they just showed unconditional concern about my well-being, how I was doing in life, and just pretty much everything about me. We weren't that familiar with each other, and these people really weren't obliged to be nice to me, but they were nice to me anyways. So it was from here that I slowly warmed up to the Buddha's life family. I began volunteering at the temple with a few other youths, which you can see in the picture below, and we eventually formed San Francisco Yat together. I tried a little bit of everything from administration, event planning, and the children's class, but the area that I found the most passionate was actually in translation and interpretation down the line. I was at the 2016 International YAT Conference in Taiwan, and at that time, that was my first time in the translation team. And you can see the picture here. This was six years ago in Fogangshan, Taiwan. And being on that team really got, to, really got me to get to know about the Buddhist Light organization beyond North America, and it also kind of brought me back to my roots because I grew up in Taiwan, but I only really got involved with the Buddha's Light organization in the United States. Since then, I've been continuously engaged in translation and interpretation efforts with Wogang Shan and BLIA, and I even used my experience to switch into a career in the localization industry. Throughout all of these years, there have been times where I was really stressed out from all the work over here or just demotivated, wanting to do, spend my time on something else. But looking back at all of the high and lows, it's the desire to repay the kindness that the venerables and volunteers initially showed me. That's what keeps me staying involved here. It's their unconditional kindness that helped me find my footing in life. And I think that by contributing to this organization, that's my way of repaying them. Venerable Master Senior once said, repay the kindness of a drop of water with a fountain. I feel I've been given a fountain of kindness from the Buddhist Light family, and I hope that what little I can give here can inspire more people to spread even more kindness. That's the end of my story, and thank you for listening. Amitabha. Thank you, Yenting. The next speaker is Lathan Wong. Lathan has been an active SFYD member since 2015, 
and has been enthusiastically involved with the temple's activities since. Please welcome Lathan. Good afternoon, Venerable and BIS member, Dajia Qixiang. The first time that I visited to Sambao Temple was back to November 2014. During that time, I hear about that has a Buddhist temple in San Francisco. I went to the temple and prayed to the Buddha. That day was a special day for me because I met the first venerable in my life, which is called Venerable Melong. Venerable Melong gave me a tour at, San Fr at the Sambao Temple. And she points out that Sambao Temple has a youth group. Most of the members are around 20 years old. And we were establishing an app which is called Simu Wenzi. Then during that time, I was not interested in the youth group. Instead, I was interested in establishing the Simu Wenzi app. I went to a general meeting of the Simu Wenzi app and I met some of the cool people, which were Randy, Yanting, and Anson. From that day on, I decided to join the youth group in Sambao Temple. The first big event that I participated was the BLI San Francisco Chinese New Year Banquet. I was never participating in the banquet that hosted by the Buddhist related group. From the banquet, I can see that all of the BLI's members was happy and they looked like a big family. The second event that I participated was the Buddha birthday event that hosted by BIA San Francisco in Fremont. And that day, San Francisco yet was officially established. One of the biggest events that I was participating was in Taiwan back to 2016, which was international YD conferences. The first time, that was the first time that I received for Wang San headquarters. And that was a great opportunity for me to learn more about Buddhism. Before I signed up the Y8 conference back in 2016, Renable Mel Zong highly recommend me to become a staff member. And she was mentioned about that Y8 members from OSC should contribute more to the conferences. I was so glad that I was a staff member for the Taiwan International YD Conference because I was not only learn how to organize the event for Taiwan yet, but also gain some knowledge about Buddhism. For the picture, you can see that it's me and Kachina to represent San Francisco yet to report, to do the annual report to all of the conference attendees. And you can see that for the second picture, you can see that me, Randy, and Kevin took the picture at the Buddha Memorial Museum with Renable Kuichuan. Well, after the Taiwan Yet conferences back in 2016, I made a decision. I need to do some contribution to Sambao Temple and San Francisco Yet. And I would like to participate the Y80 conference that hosts by Fort Washington headquarters. And you could see that this third picture was the picture of why San Francisco Year participant participated the 2018 YAD conferences in Fort Washington headquarters. Thank you. Thank you, Lathan. The next speaker is Priscilla Lee. Priscilla is the former Sacramento YAD president. Please welcome Priscilla. A special blessing to everyone. My name is Priscilla Lee from the Sacramento YAD. I started out as a volunteer in 2013 uh, when my cousin first brought me to the Fogonshan Bodhi Temple. I helped it with cleaning and eventually with the meal serving. Uh, meal serving was an interesting experience, especially going through the training taught by Venerable Ruxian. The Venerable showed and explained in through detail um, placing the tableware, 
um, serving food to devotees and cleaning the area when finished. After the meal serving, I became more interested in the temple. I became intrigued in the knowledge and information um, about the temple. Venerable Ru Shen and the Dharma brothers and sisters um, were very helpful in sharing the knowledge and information to me. I enjoy learning about our Venerable Master uh, Senior Humanist of Buddhism, Buddhist Light International Association, and the Young Adult Division. Venerable Ru Shen not only shared the knowledge, but she also guides and nurtures us um, through many activities and events at the temple. Um, she also gave me an introduced uh, introduced, um, sorry, interested youth at that time, the opportunity in attending the conferences and workshop uh, provided by the Foguang Shan. The conferences and workshop helped me broaden my view towards Foguang Shan. In 2015, I attended the North American Regional Conference in Dallas, Texas. Um, during that time, I met many youth groups and learning and listening to the, their experience about their group gave me the courage along with other youths um, in the pictures that you've seen to ask our venerable in creating the young adult division in Sacramento. In 2016, the Sacramento YAD was established and our group went to the 2016 International Conference in Taiwan as the official YAD of Sacramento. At this conference, we met many youths around the world. I was able to learn many things from the venerables at the conference. They share many stories and teachings that made this a valuable learning experience. Another conference that I attended was the 2019 North American Regional Conference in Montreal, Canada. I was impressed in how Montreal YAD organized the conference successfully. I enjoy learning out and seeing how all North American youth groups united to make this a fun and learning experience. Throughout the year, I learned many things that became a meaningful part of my life. I learned and built uh, leaderships from workshops and conferences I attended. In YAV, I guide youth members in participating in temples and community events. I learned teamwork by assigning and dividing duties and responsibility to youth because I know that I do not have to do everything myself. I have youths that help and support me. When dealing with college and work life along with YAD, I learned time and management and organizational skill to make sure that I can balance my time well and they do not conflict with one or the other. My interpersonal skill improved when I joined the temple. I used to be quiet and shy before I volunteered, but after meeting so many people who shared the interests as me in humanistic Buddhism, I became more outspoken and cheerful in sharing what I learned from the temple to the people I know. I'm glad that I'm here today to share with you what I learned. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. Uh, next up, we have uh, Selena Zhang. Selena is the former Sacramento YAD Activities Coordinator, who is one of the founding members involved with SAC YAD since 2016. She was actively involved with creating events that allow everyone to learn, practice, and spread humanistic Buddhism. She is unable to attend today in person, but has shared a pre-recorded video for us. Hello, everyone. Ji Xiang. My name is Selena, and I used to be the previous activities coordinator for Sacramento Yan. I remember going to Bodai Temple with my grandma to eat lunch and everybody was always so welcoming and smiling. There was always something to look forward to and I made a lot of good friends going. In 2016, she asked if we wanted to create Sacramento Yet and the rest is history. We have done a lot of things, uh, things such as an informational booth on Earth Day. Uh, we passed out pamphlets of humanistic buddhism and explained to them what it was my favorite part was actually seeing how others is like wow i can see Uh, learning from Shifu and Master Sing Yun has broadened my horizon to become a better person and to act better in different situations. 
One of my fondest memories was going to Sanban Temple in SF for Buddha's birthday, where everybody marched on the streets right outside the temple. It was a exhilarating event, very cool. I've never really witnessed something like that before. There's a lot of people, a lot of good food and lion dancing. The most memorable part of that day was actually near the end when we saw other performances. Um, R Yad and SF Yad perform and SF Yad performance was really cool. They had a skit and it was really well performed, comedic, comedic and gave insightful meaning of humanistic Buddhism and a moral to the story. Everybody was laughing, having a good time, but they were also maintaining good lighting, music and storytelling. I loved how everybody was working together and that really stood out in their skit. We all had a blast and SF Yad did really well with hosting and letting us feel welcomed into their home. So another memory I treasure is when we actually went to Taiwan for the BLIA International Conference. We visited a lot of temples, including Hoguansan, one of the biggest Buddhist monasteries in Taiwan. And we actually dormed there, which was a lot of fun. And we got reunited with a lot of friendly faces, including SF Yad, and a lot of new faces as well, which was really cool to see where they where their background come from. There's a lot, there's a lots of informational events about humanistic Buddhism and all kinds of Buddhism actually. Uh, performances, lots of performances. We visited exotic lands and we ate delicious food. Every part of the trip was really exciting, but the most memory part, memorable part of the trip was actually meeting Venerable Master Singyun in person. Um, he did a speech, and after hearing him speak and answering some questions that some brave audience members asked, something changed me. Changed in me a little bit. I became, I guess, more patient and under, a more understanding person. Uh, I'm I'm pretty impatient by nature, so I'm really glad that I got to listen to something so so great and uh, life changing. And I'm forever grateful for this experience and thankful for everyone who has made this event possible. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I hope everyone's doing well and friends and family, all included. Um, and happy 30th anniversary to SF. BLIA SF. Thank you, Selena. The next speaker is Alexander Ting. Alexander newly, is a newly joined active Fremont YAD member. Please welcome Alexander. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, um, I wanted to present my reflection uh, by sharing a slideshow of some of my memories with BLA and um, how these activities helped me mature both mentally and spiritually. Um, because I am relatively new to this organization, um, some of the events I will be showing were Fuguang San activities. Um, my journey with BLA began, sorry, uh, began with my mom. Um, my mom invited me and my sister to volunteer at various events. Um, and after just a few events, I witnessed the family-like relationship uh, with fellow members that uh, enticed me to be a part of more activities. So in this flip, uh, first slide here, um, I have performed at multiple BLIA and Fuguang San events over the years. Uh, through these performances, I truly understood firsthand that music can be a form of communication that people prefer. So not all of our emotions and thoughts can be expressed through words, but music can translate and emulate our positive thoughts and messages. So performing Master Xinging song, Be the Light, allowed us to truly internalize the meaning of the lyrics and touch so many people around the world. Um, so in the second slide, uh, my mom and I uh, transferred and shipped 21 boxes of PPE to our brothers and sisters in Thailand and Malaysia. So these boxes contained 1,000 isolation gowns, 1,500 protective goggles, 500 face shields, 2,500 medical masks, and 2,995 masks. So being able to provide necessary equipment, protective equipment to areas of limited supply um, in 2020, so during a um, very crazy time for all of us, um, it allowed me to feel 
um, comfort in the thought that my efforts were actually making a real difference around the world. So in the next slide, there's a short video of our brothers and sisters in, in Malaysia receiving the PPE delivery. Um, and it was a heartwarming to see their faces, their facial expressions of genuine happiness and gratitude. Okay, well, I think I put in the link to play it, but um, so moving on to slide four, um, this is our Fo Wang San Yad's dance performance to Master Xing song, uh, Gay, or Give, uh, for the North American Chinese New Year event. Um, although not all of us were dancers, uh, we did enjoy trying our best to emulate Master Xing's inspiring message of selflessness um, during this performance. Um, so the next slide, um, being a dental assistant um, has allowed me to teach the importance of proper and consistent oral hygiene practices uh, to the youth at our temple. Uh, these classes um, that I taught were held both virtually and in person to answer questions and demonstrate correct brushing and flossing techniques. Um, in this experience, interacting and learning about these bright young minds gave me a sense of gratitude to have the opportunity to positively influence future generations in such a small way. Um, in the next slide, um, I have been so appreciative and of the refreshing energy and the welcoming spirit of our Fremont branch of Fogong San Temple. Um, as Venerable Jian always says, um, it is our second home. So learning from Venerable Jian and our fellow Sishong and Sijie has calmed and matured my mindset when it comes to multiple aspects of my own life. So while cleaning and maintaining that second home, um, I like to reflect on what I've learned at Temple and how I could apply it to my day-to-day -day thoughts and actions. Um, so this last slide uh, is showing Foguang San Fremont chapter preparing porridge uh, for the Buddha Enlightenment Day celebration. So over 600 bowls of porridge were served. Um, it was a fun experience being able to celebrate Buddha by running an assembly line with fellow Sushong and Sijiz um, filled with both work and um, laughter and happiness. So to conclude, um, I just want to congratulate the um, San Francisco BLIA organization on 30 successful years and thank them for the opportunities to give back to the community, to learn and grow as an individual, and to create such a strong bond with a loving community. Thank you, guys. The next speaker is Richard Torres. Richard is also a newly joined active Fremont YAD member. Please welcome Richard. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Torres and I am a member of Fremont Yad. I wanted to speak to you today about the wonderful time I've had attending and being part of all the BII events. Um, I have uh, amazing memories working and being around all those BII members here in Fremont and I'm delighted to share some of those experiences with you all right now. Uh, one of the first ones I had uh, was at a Chinese New Year event uh, over six years ago. Since then, I've had the chance to meet Venerable Chu Lian, Chu Lian, and other members of Yad and BLA, BILA. I see how warm and welcoming everyone involved has been, and I'm so happy to have gone to hear the annual message given by Venerable Master Xing Yun. I was lucky enough to be invited back to multiple events afterwards, uh, such as meeting uh, Venerable Xing Ding. I joined in one of the Fremont Lake park picnic events that we had during the pandemic and I was able to be safely held uh, even though we were all sort of supposed to be um, separated. We had fun playing games, doing Zumba dances, being led through guided meditation by Master Chuan, and spending time with members when being around each other was a much needed uh, relief. It was so wonderful to see how happy people were able to be during this communal experience that was the pandemic. I also had the pleasure of taking part in the creating a music video along with other members of uh, Yan for Master Shi Yun's song, Open Your Heart. We chose to sing 
we created hand puppets of ourselves and the venerables and we saw our hard work come together into a joyous fun final uh, video performance uh, last year i had the amazing opportunity to help with the fremont blia buddhist light fall children's classes um, being able to teach the kids buddhism and guide them through fun activities although virtual was very rewarding and i had a lot of fun uh, myself participating in the activities uh, i also volunteered for the lava zao event where I find myself learning the process of making La Bao Zao and the pleasure of coming together with other members of BLA, BLIA for efficiently packing and distributing over 400 or 600 uh, servings to community members. I was also very impressed on how well we worked together and how the event was actually be able to get pulled off. Earlier this year as well, the temple came together for a temple cleanup for the passing of the new year. Everyone still had their mask on, but it was a palpable positive energy. We all worked hard and had fun doing it. Each time I had gone around to those volunteers at BLIA events, I felt a beautiful energy that um, I hadn't actually felt anywhere else. We all had an unspoken goal to make the world and lives of those around us that we came in contact with uh, much better. Knowing we were all surrounded with like-minded people with this goal, we had the effect of spreading joy to each of us beyond measure. I have few words to fully describe the experience that I've had the pleasure of being a part of, whether it be the teaching the arts and crafts, uh, doing choreographed dance performances or simple cleaning duty. Um, but I do know I can only hope to continue to be able to join in more events and spread joy and peace to all those uh, through BLIA. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. The next speaker is Ki Heng Tiao. Ki is a friend of BLIA and first participated in the Sunday English Buddhism class and has since led the class for many years without interruption, even after relocating back to Canada. He also helped the Saturday English Dharma service, which is currently canceled due to the pandemic and has supported BLIA and the temple in many events. Please welcome Ki. Thank you, Vicky. Um, my name is Ki Heng uh, from a Sunday Buddhism class, Sampao Temple. And I would like to share with you my past experiences at Sampao Temple in the following video clip. Enjoy. Sankal, so how she, so how far, 
，平安就是我们的人间宝，人间最美好，十三号，人间最美十三号，做好事，说好话，存好心。平安就是我们的人间宝，人间最美好。十三号，做好事，举手之劳，功德庙，说好话，慈悲爱，雨如东阳，存好心，诚意善，愿好运到，三年清净真真好。做好事，举手之劳，功德妙。说好话，慈悲爱，雨如东阳。存好心，诚意善，约好云道。三年心清真。All right, thank you. Uh, about the affinities, uh, I would like to share two points here. Uh, first is the SFYD, and the second one is the English Buddhism class. Uh, in late 2014, Venom Miaolong asked me to work together with her to re-establish the SFYD.、Uh, it was such an honor that I've been involved in SFYD activities, especially during、uh, his infancy,、uh, with this president Randy,、uh, Yenting, and also、uh, Anson. And also, I have a great sense of pride and joy to observe how SFYD has developed and excelled over time. Especially under the leadership of Celine, together with Carl, Chuling, and now、uh, Tianjin, and actually many, many, many more. In many instances,、uh, the English Buddhism class members would also join the events organized by SFYD, such as food bank and other local community services. And I thank each of you, SFYD, for bringing the youthfulness in me. And second, about the English Buddhism class. My original intent was to learn meditation back in 2003, but one thing leads to another. I took up the English Buddhism class taught by Venerable Zhuan Miao at the time, who later asked a group of seven volunteers, me included, to become novice Dharma teachers in 2006, and the class is still running today. One incident I remember very deeply was that Venerable Zhuan Miao mentioned about running the class persistently and don't give. Even there's only one student left in the class. It is a great test of one's perseverance, patience, and commitment, and it pays off. So, what have I learned? Giving, sharing, contributing, benefiting, understanding, caring. Simply put,、uh, giving with joy and wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Key. Next up, we have Alex Amies. As a friend of Fu Guangshan and BLIA, Alex volunteers in the Sunday English Buddhism class and is involved with translation efforts for the Fu Guang Dictionary of Buddhism and NTIReader.org projects. Please welcome Alex. Hello, everybody. Hey, thanks, Key. Thanks for the video, and it was awesome. And thanks for sticking with us. Uh, also, congratulations to BLI San Francisco for the 30th anniversary. My name is Alex Amies.、Um, I have been a Buddhist since about 2003-2005 um, um, time,、uh, where I start got started by reading books that I found、um, actually in a museum exhibit first of all, and then Barnes and Nobles and so on,、um, and then. I was kind of hooked on that after reading books, and the thing that got me hooked, first of all, was this message of non-self. It was very important to me because prior to that, it was all about me, and actually, I found that actually didn't make me happy. It wasn't satisfying. And later on, I found Silai Temple in Los Angeles. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. Actually, I was born in Australia. I migrated to the US in 1992. Uh, I lived、uh, in Los Angeles for a lot of that time. I moved to China for and lived there in Beijing and Shanghai for five years,、um, where I actually also had the chance to visit many、um, famous Buddha sites. And there was a few members of、um, Fulgong Shan、um, monastics there as well. So that was really important to me. Then, 2013, I moved back to the U.S.、Uh, up to the Bay Area,、um, where I became an engineer. At a、um, large software company here, and、um, 
you know, it's been good to combine my work and personal interest with some tools that I built to um, help with uh, translation uh, tools and so on. Um, next slide. The merit of volunteering is immeasurable. This is kind of related to the message of non-self. Um, one of the lines that has been very influential for me is from the Diamond Sutra, where it says, if your bodhisattva gives without abiding in any notion whatsoever, then his merit will be immeasurable. Because it should say his or her. And uh, also, it doesn't just mean giving money or other goods here. Volunteers give their time. And I've actually found it more satisfying to do volunteering than giving money. Of course, money is needed to do everything, but volunteering uh, is more personal and giving my time and dedication is, is very personally satisfying. And um, of course, the trick here is if you expect something in return, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. Um, you can't expect merit uh, and, you know, in return. Um, you need to abide in no notion. This, of course, this uh, text is a little bit old. It's been translated a long time ago, many years ago, but without abiding any, any notion whatsoever means without being attached uh, to a goal, saying volunteering. So what is the difference between volunteering and working? Working is good. Working, if we work for an employer, you may work for your own business and you have an expectation for something back in return, your salary maybe. Um, maybe something less tangible and not actually money like advertising or advocacy for the company, but it has some economic value. In volunteering, it's purely um, for no profit, for no salary. You're just giving your time without expecting a return. Now, what did I find that volunteering with Foregong Shan different from volunteering from other places? Previously had volunteered um, with other organizations Sierra Club and so on. And uh, they're good organizations. Um, most charities, nonprofits are good organizations. But there was this idea, still this idea of attachment, achievement. And I think at Foregrown Shan, the difference here um, is uh, really a message of non self. And that is actually very meaningful. Um, so, as mentioned, um, I've been in the English class um, and with under. Key's leadership, which has been essential. Um, and uh, also uh, before with uh, Venerable Miao Lung, um, who got relocated, and also before at the Silai and Nantian in Australia. Um, and um, so that's been very good. Also, it's been quite challenging actually, because I don't feel my skill is really in teaching. I think it's more in software. So I think the translation, and I've got a passion for translation, but also for building the tool. So, our next slide, the, what I'm working on right now is related to the next slide. Yeah. What I'm really working on right now, and maybe you guys will hopefully get experience to, to try it out, um, is a translation portal for, um, for Guangshan translation for um, uh, Venerable Master's works for temple documents and so on. It combines machine translation with the HB, uh, the glossary of humanistic Buddhism. Um, and uh, hopefully that will make our uh, translation work faster and more effective. Still will be quite challenging, I imagine. Uh, anyway, I hope after this has become more generally available, you'll be able to use it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alex. And the last speaker is Charlie Chang. Charlie is a Fremont YAD advisor and an active participant in BLIA events. Please welcome Charlie. Hello, everybody. I was just tweeting to all the venerables and everyone over here. It's so nice to having me over here. Thank you for the chance. Um, can you go ahead and pull out the slide? I'll give, my, uh, give a quick introduction to myself. Um, I really started uh, you know, participating in a lot of activities with Foreground Sun since um, Fremont Temple started, I think it was way back in uh, 2004. Uh, that has, has been a long time. And then I was mainly focused on um, just helping out temples. And at the time, uh, there was really no youth group uh, yet. Right? So I was kind of tasked to, to start there. But 
Me, right now, I'm a BOIA uh, subchapter member in the uh, Foster City subchapter. And here you're saying, you're seeing, um, and I'm part of this large group and on the lower right corner is one of the, uh, the event that happened a couple of years ago um, in San Francisco that we were kind of doing a show and tell what the BOIA is. Can you go ahead and flip to the next slide, please? Um, really my, my role, as I mentioned earlier, was you know, focus on, on youth and helping them to take the leap from different stages. So they could, um, you know, they, they come in different stages. You know, some of them start as kids in, in the children's classes. They go on to junior high, high school, college, college phase, and then some of them will eventually go on to their career path, right? So me being a more senior person at the time was helping to organize and help this uh, YAD group to become mature. And it took a couple of years, um, you know, kind of um, watch these children grow as um, they are progress progressing through, through their lives. And Fremont YAD didn't really officially start until 2010, right? But I was actually never a, a official um, YAD member at all. I stay as a, a, a supervisor, if you will, uh, because at the time, I think um, you have to face reality, right? The, the age gap is there, right? So I was taking a lot of different roles in teaching them, um, Mandarin, teaching them Buddhist, teaching them what Master Xingyun's uh, principles are. And depending on the age that I'm facing, I do have to try to uh, keep an interest in the, the type of um, the type of subject they're interested, right? As in high school, you're probably more focused on academic. In college, you may be more focused on what's the next step in, in their life into career, right? Can you go ahead and flip the next page, please? Right. So, you know, through, through my time, um, even though I eventually became a, a member of BOIA back in uh, 2016 and was elected as a board member, I, I continue to try to stay uh, engaged with all our uh, young adults. And on the upper left, left corner is um, when my new house was built, I invited just a few people to do a housewarming and, and, and asked the veteran person to come to my house to do a blessing. But then a lot of people wanted to come and <laughs> look at it. My, my house is actually not very big. And then it was like 60 or 70 people who, who we all come here and, and say hello and participate, right? But all, all of the event, the point is that I, I want our young adults to stay engaged, right? Um, I've always tried to bridge that gap. Um, you know, on the lower, quite, lower right corner is a, a camping event that um, our subchapter organized. And even though it was camping, a lot of um, adults were participating and we were doing a, a outdoor tea ceremony, if you will. We, you can see a little kid right there on the upper right corner on the, on the, uh, on the picture. You know, we invite the entire family over here, right? Because we want the, the young adults to, to stay engaged and they are our hope in, in the future. All right. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. And what, what's very satisfying to me is, you know, as I watch them grow, right, I, I see they, they all have very high potential. Sometimes I just help them with their schoolwork. Maybe sometimes I help them with the, the Buddhism because some of the concept may be uh, very difficult to grasp. Uh, similar to the the uh, the child that key and um, Richard or um, I forgot the last person's name, but you know you're pretty much teaching English Buddhism. Uh, it's it's similar. I think we all share the same passion. Um, we see tremendous um, potential for our young adults, right? And sometimes I, I try to give them lessons, but oftentimes I just watch over them and then provide them guidance as needed. Right. The, the picture on the lower right corner is really to tell you that I was the person who's taking the photo, but, but I watched over them. You know, I want them to grow freely with their own style. Right? I don't want to give them um, strict instructions. You know, this is what you need to do, 
or you had to do it certain ways. You just, I, I've always believed that they have their own style and in their generation, there are things that they think is more important to them. And then I just provide them the type of um, guidance they need. All right, next slide, please. All right, uh, now this, the upper left corner is probably more than 10 years ago. It was a um, Buddha's birthday event, outdoor Buddha's event. And in the summer of the, um, our young adults, they have gone into their, their next stage of the life already. Some of them are working, some of them went to, went to college. In the lower right corner, you see two, two boys, um, they're sleeping in my car. The, the point of showing this picture is that, you know, I, I think where I position myself is to support them much from the background. And in reality is that a lot of our young adults um, transportation is something very critical to them, right? They are as, especially when they need to go on um, to some events, you know, even if it's local, going from Fremont to, to um, San Francisco Temple, it requires transportation. So I've always tried to enable them, right? This is the least I can do, right? And, you know, it, it seems a no brainer to a lot of adults. You just, a car comes natural to you. But to a lot of um, young adults, if they're in junior highs, high school, maybe even in college, that transportation is very often a bottleneck, right? And then this, this picture is when we were traveling to Shilai Temple down in LA, and they did tremendous work. They're tiring. They're just taking a nap in my car. And what can I do, right? I, I, I want them to grow, but I support them being that, that driver for them. You know? And next slide, please. And uh, I heard earlier that Celine mentioned about um, give your best, but not expect uh, you know, the, the results. It's, this is uh, a story about our former uh, YAD president, Patrick Fenn, and upper left corner, that's Patrick. On the lower right corner, that's uh, the two boys in the middle, it's Ellen, Patrick's older brother. Uh, and then on the upper right corner is a ski trip that we took with Patrick family and a few other friends. And the reason why I pull out this picture is because uh, I've watched Patrick grow up since, um, I don't know, five or seven years old. And I started teaching him uh, when he was in the children's class, right? And it's just watching over him, you, you, you can't stop to ask, wonder, um, when are you going to start seeing fruition of a investment you put in so much, right? And as, as Celine mentioned earlier is, yes, you just give your best. And then you know that someone sometime out there is practicing something they learned, humanistic Buddhism or the three good deeds. And then uh, Patrick is actually now a registered nurse. And I heard that he visited Fremont Temple last year, mid last year, uh, just to see how things are going. And I, I heard that, you know, he, because of COVID, you know, uh, he took a lot, he learned from Temple and tried to apply it to his job, right? So just hearing that makes me very touching and satisfying that yes, what Master Shingen has taught us is, is true, right? Give your best. Um, there's tremendous hope out there and the investment that you put in will eventually come in fruition. You, you don't know when, but there, there will be a, a stage where um, if you hear it, great, right? It's rewarding for me, right? But if you don't, don't hear it for the investment that you put in, you know that somewhere out there, someone is, is practicing, right? So in the interest of time, that, that's why I was share. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you very much, Charlie, and the rest of the speakers. Wow, the speakers had so many wonderful experiences and growth to share today. I know some of you probably have some questions, so now we will move on to the question and answer segment. So it looks like uh, we don't have any questions in the chat. Uh, so if anyone would like to uh, ask a question, just go ahead and raise your hand.
Anyone have any questions? You can ask any yeah, of the speakers. Like oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll ask the first question uh, for Celine. So I, I think uh, the experience that you have illustrated in your uh, in in your speak um, is very applicable for a lot of us, a lot of the audience here who's working. Um, so you you learned from your activities and experiences in SF Yard that letting go of your personal ambitions and expectations not only resulted in you know getting to uh, happiness. Uh, but it actually ended up helping in your professional career and, and actually reaching your ambitions that you already you know, had, um, but let go. Uh, so, but, you know, getting to there, I'm certain it took you a lot of, you know, practice and continuous um, self-reflection. I'm wondering if you have any tips uh, or methods that you can share on how you actually... Um, you know, get from understanding that I need to do this to actually being able to do this, you know, regular, naturally. Thanks for uh, the question, Angus. I have to say that I'm not there yet. I'm not probably enlightened or anything. I'm like as flawed as anybody uh, here today. Um, I think uh, it's a lot of realization that uh, what's really causing me unhappiness is because of me really wanting the things that uh, and things aren't aren't going the way that I wanted it to be. So the more you kind of uh, like want something and then like try so hard and then depend your happiness on that thing, the more you will realize that that's actually the cause of your unhappiness. Um, so it's actually a lot of um, like whenever I'm, I'm unhappy or at least my trigger point of what caused me to start reflecting is really reflecting upon what's the cause of unhappiness. And if you are always pointing towards outside, oh, this person is terrible, that person didn't give me what I want or like this because this situation happened. If you're always pointing outside, then you're not reflecting in the right way because you realize that there's nothing outside of you that you can truly control. <laughs> Like you can't like the, the you have rainy days and then you'll be like, ah, oh, why is the heaven like raining today? I need to go out for camping, right? You know, like you'll blame uh, everything else. And you realize that the only thing you can ever control is like your mindset about how you face whatever that is around you. So my trigger point starts from I'm unhappy. And then I will reflect upon what's causing my unhappiness. And then what exactly can I control? And at the end of the day, my conclusion is always the same. I have to change my expectations. <laughs> I have to adjust my expectations. And it starts from real accepting the things that you don't like, that that's a reality. <laughs> and then you go from there and just like focus on the things you can control, focus on the things you can do. So that's my, that's usually my thought process. And over time, this becomes faster, like, I'll be unhappy a shorter amount of time. And then slowly and slowly, I will real notice that more and more. And then the recovery time become faster. Thank you very much, Celine. That, that, you know what, I, I work in IT, so that kind of brings me, reminds me of the terms of like disaster recovery and mean time to recovery. <laughs> that, that's exactly that. We, we have to learn how to do our own personal disaster recovery. Thank you. Thank you, Celine. Does anyone else have any questions they would like to ask? It looks like there's one in the chat. Oh, let's see. All right, so uh, Winston is asking Charlie, how do you manage personal life, work, and BLIA responsibilities to all together? And there are many online events during the pandemic. Charlie, is Charlie still here? Yes, I'm here. Um, your, your audio were a little choppy, so I'm reading the message right now. <laughs> so how do you manage personal life, work, and BI responsibility all together, especially during the pandemic? Ah, okay, that, that is a great one. That's a great one. So 
Um, I've always asked myself, you know, I, I do love doing the volunteer work because it's just very rewarding. But at the same time, I, I, I'm in the software industry as well, right? And everybody works for IT. You understand how stressful it is. But here's the thing. You have to position yourself to find the right balance. I'm not saying um, anyone who's going to give you advice how to balance your day-to-day -day life versus your volunteer will, will apply to you because you have to find the right balance for yourself, right? So even though I'm doing my volunteering with Foguang San, with Temple, um, I still try to carve out some time for my people, uh, for my friends who are not in this um, volunteer at, um, space, if you will, right? Um, my work, it's, um, I have the luxury to be flexible. So of course, every, every week we're working 40 hours a day, but I stay focused when I am working, I stay focused. I try not to think about the, uh, the volunteer work. Right? Um, to me, it actually took me a while to say, well, can I commit five hours a week for volunteer work? Can I commit 10 hours a week for that volunteer work? Right? So I constantly evaluate myself to say, hey, this is how much time I can commit. Uh, if I overcommit, then I'm going to draw back and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Uh, earlier, I, I saw Alex. Now I, I see your name. Yes, about the diamond sutra. That's exactly how you should practice what you learned from sutra and bring it to your day-to-day -day life because you try your best, but don't think about the outcome. So don't feel pressure that um, if you have some responsibilities, for your volunteer work and you're not able to accomplish it because you need to find that right balance for you. And that's part of, uh, I think in, in, in Diamond Sutra, I actually teach you that to, to let go when um, the, there are only com certain commitments you can make. And when, when you let go, you will actually be free, free of it, right? And then take what you learned from from sutra from tempo and try to apply to your to your the jo your job or school right so that has been actually worked out for me quite well right just focus on what you're doing at the moment hopefully that answers your question thank you thank you for sharing your wisdom charlie uh, if there are no other questions, uh, then lastly, I would like to please welcome advising Venerable Jishan to give a brief speech about our event. Auspicious <laughs> greeting to everyone from Singapore. I think not only my voice you can hear, you can maybe you can also hear the voice from another group <laughs> because in Wisdom Law Temple, we have three different groups. It happened together. <laughs> so there's Cantonese, there's the Chinese, and Chinese next to me. Uh, she's in her own world. Uh, I've never been to, I've never become one member of YAD before. Uh, even uh, before I uh, become monastic. But uh, before probably more than 23 years ago, uh, I was also helping uh, when my sister entered into a BLIA. So 20 years ago, when Variable Master Xun tried to build uh, the Fukuang University and Taiwan people, those chapters, they say, okay, we can do something to maybe fundraising and doing something. So what I'm doing uh, 23 years ago, I helped my sister to sorting those recyclable materials, which nobody want to do it. You never want to do with the garbages. But the university, of course, hmm, now we can see it happen and it grows very well. And you would say, oh, Sifu, it sounds like you already entered into the Fogonsan very early. Um, maybe, but I would say, even I enter into the Fogonsan, those people we still focus, we try to um, 
focus on we will say they are very important and we focus is widely remembered. Uh, I'm not saying all YID, you are not important. And say YID always all very important to us because when we see the young people, we see the hope. So it's very important why it is this kind of thing. I'm very thankful that you still stay here. You learn in the Buddhism and you also try to reach out to other people. And maybe you will say, mm, Shifu, you should say something that what kind of event we, we hold or we had before. Uh, I would say all of the events is just skill for me. It's just try to reach me, enter into the way to the Buddha faith. And I really appreciate all of you still on the way to the Buddha faith. Thank you very much. Thanks to all advising venerables for your participation, encouragement, and Dharma talks. We also want to thank all speakers for forming affinities with the audience by sharing their experiences and joy. Through everyone's story, see that being in BLIA opens up many conditions for learning, leading us to expand our horizons and gain the strength to undertake endeavors. This marks the end of the Affinities with the Buddha's Light event in celebration of the 30th anniversary of BLIA World Headquarters and BLIA San Francisco. However, there are still many more words and experiences that Buddha's Light members have to share. In 2022, BLIA San Francisco will host a series of celebration events. One of them will be a 30th anniversary media exhibit where the beautiful stories of the past 30 years will be told through historical photos and videos. The date and location will be announced separately. Thanks to all of the hardworking staff that made this event a reality. Finally, we want to thank all online attendees for making the Affinities with the Buddha's Light event a success. We're truly grateful for your participation. May all beings live without fear and coexist in peace. Thank you. Wake up from the darkness Look out on peaceful skies Living a life of hope Planting the seeds we sow <laughs> Bye.